What is up everybody? This is Voth and welcome back. In this video we're going to discuss the general play style and flavor of the Empire. Now I have seen and heard in a couple of different places that they are based on the Holy Roman Empire, but for the most part people gloss over this and I thought I would try to nail down a time frame. Now the Empire makes use of black powder weapons and historically black powder was spread to Europe in the 12th century by the Mongols but didn't come into military use until the 13th century, which was also the beginning of the Renaissance, and this is reflected in their interesting choice of clothing. The 13th century also saw the end of the Crusades as they ultimately ground to a halt and failure, but it wasn't the end of religious zealotry as it saw the genesis of self-flagellation or mortification of the flesh, the act of beating oneself in a form of uh, extreme confessional, I guess. It should also be noted that the Inquisition that started in the 12th century was certainly growing into an institution by the 13th. This is all reflected in uh, some of the units that we'll get to later. Now, in terms of roster, the Empire is definitely the lowest fantasy. Most of the units and the weapons that you will see them fielding are actually historically accurate and representative of the 13th century. Okay, so let's talk infantry. The bulk of the Empire's army is made up of state troops, which is a standing imperial army, and a unit of swordsmen is going to be the most common. They come with a decent set of armor, a sword, and a shield, and they're said to be fantastic fencers. State troops can also be fielded with a standard spear, and in the tabletop version this allows them to fight three ranks deep, so in total war terms it's sort of blurring the lines between spears and pikes, but we'll just have to wait and see how they choose to implement them. Next up we have halberdiers, which are a lightly armored shock infantry. They'll probably be best at swinging around the flanks, but due to the length of their weapons it's likely they will also excel at supporting the cavalry fight. And if you prefer heavy shock infantry, the Empire can field that as well in these great swords. They are very well armored and they come with a trait stubborn which means they're going to be very hard to break. So they'll have lots of staying power to deal lots of damage. Now next up we have the Flagellant Warband. That's with a G, not a T. And they take their name directly from a 13th century sect of Roman Catholic extremists. These guys are basically berserkers, and they will fight to the last man. Okay, let's discuss their skirmishing. The Empire comes with standard issue bows, which allows them to move and fire and shoot over things, so they're overall very versatile. They also come with crossbows, which are less mobile and need a little bit of time to reload, but they give you that much-needed armor penetration. And the Empire can also field handgunners, which will have very good armor penetration as well. These units will likely be more expensive or require some sort of research to field. Moving on to cavalry, they have the Pistoliers, which are going to be a fast-moving skirmish cavalry. Now, how viable they're going to be really depends on if they have Parthian shot or not. And considering they're using pistols, it's really hard to argue that they can't shoot behind them while riding. The Outriders are also a unit of fast skirmisher cavalry that bring more firepower to the battlefield. I'd also like to mention that they can equip a grenade launcher, which has some interesting strategic implications. The Empire also has access to some heavy shock cavalry, as demonstrated here in these Knights Panther. And these Knights of the White Wolf charge into combat with a two-handed hammer. It seems as though they would make a fairly brutal melee cavalry. Now, while the Empire fields a variety of Knights that either fit into the melee or the shock cavalry category, the Demogriff Knights are definitely blurring those lines. While the Riders can carry lances into battle, giving them a significant charge bonus, once locked in melee, the mounts themselves begin to claw and bite at the enemies around them, making them an interesting and versatile blend of shock and melee cavalry. Okay, now let's discuss artillery, which the Empire has a great variety of. Here we see a great cannon. A mortar with a high fire arc and blast radius that's great for clearing out infantry. And this thing is a hell blaster volley gun. It's basically a low caliber Gatling cannon and I imagine that it is also great at chewing through infantry and can certainly deter a cavalry charge. Now let's move on to special units because things are getting really hard to categorize. 
<laughs> this thing is called the Hellstorm rocket battery, and it's a little bit random, but if you're up against a large army, it has a lot of damage potential. And now we have this interesting thing called the Luminarch of Hish. Now it helps with dispelling, and it also seems to function like a magical ballista for all intents and purposes. And then on top of all that, it also has an aura that will assist with the defenses of nearby allies. Then we have the Celestial Huraconum. And while it may look ridiculous, it has an aura that boosts the offensive capability of nearby allies. It can assist in the casting of spells, and it also functions as sort of a magical mortar as it casts random vortices on the battlefield. And up next, if you have any love for steampunk, you're going to love this thing, the steam tank. It is basically a heavily armored mobile cannon. Now I have no idea how they're going to try and balance this in Total War, but I can guarantee you one thing, it's going to cost a ton. In fact, it may even make elephants look cheap by comparison. Now up to this point, I have not included a hero unit in any of the videos because there's just too many of them. But this guy, the Witch Hunter, I felt really reflected the influence of the Inquisition. And if he's not a playable character in the sense of a general, I hope that he is at least an agent. Now when it comes to magic, the Empire has a lot of versatility here as well. They can cast life magic to regenerate lost HP, light magic which is good for buffing up your army, shadow magic which is good at debuffing the enemy, and of course fire which is good for burning stuff. Just to name a few. Now let's talk tactics. The Empire is the quintessential jack-of-all-trades. They're good at everything, but the master of nothing. And therein lies their strength. Versatility. Since they are the master of none, it wouldn't be wise to attempt to fight fire with fire. That is saying you wouldn't set out to beat the vampire counts in a war of attrition, and you certainly wouldn't want to get stuck in a shootout with the dwarves. Instead, you should evaluate your enemy, determine their strengths and their weaknesses, and then choose the proper tools for dispatching them. Alright, now let's quickly discuss the culture of the Empire, since they are ultimately based off the Holy Roman Empire as we determined earlier. I expect that they will hold land and expand in a very classical sense of Total War games. I assume that they will have a strong religious influence, and it's quite possible that they will start off with large land holdings, since after all, they are an empire. Now while I covered the empire last, they are certainly not least. In fact, in the tabletop version, their versatility makes them one of the power factions. And I suspect once the tournaments start happening in Warhammer Total War, the empire will be a power faction there as well. Though the empire is technically the last of the announced factions, um, it's not necessarily the end of this series, but in the interest of keeping this video as short as possible, I'm not going to discuss all of my options going forward, and I'll actually do that in a separate video. As always, feedback and constructive criticism is always welcome, and if you're interested in keeping up with this series where I learn about Warhammer, please remember to subscribe.